Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all good. It's nice to have you back here. You're most welcome back and especially those who are returning. Thank you for coming back. If you're new here, you're most welcome to this space. My name is Gloria and this is A Thousand Shades of Glow. On this channel, we love everything to do with lifestyle. We do skincare, we do fragrances. Occasionally we do some cooking. Today I brought you another clone. Oh yes, another Middle Eastern clone. This time I have found a clone to one of my favorite fragrances of all times. I have spoken about my love for rose oud combinations. Uh, rose oud is a very Middle Eastern thing, but it has taken over. You know, it's become a mainstream love for many people. Now, I know rose oud is not for everyone, but for those people who love the rose oud uh, scent profile, I've got something for you. Now, before I show you the clone, I'll show you the fragrance that has been cloned. And it's this one here. This is Rose d'Arabie by Amani Privé. One of my favorite fragrances. I have featured this one in my Rose Oud Combo video. I talked about this one alongside other favorites of mine. Uh, so this is one of my favorite Rose Oud Combos. And this is a rose that has got saffron, it's got oud, patchouli, it's got amber cords. The rose in here is a Damascian rose or Damascus rose. And it is, it opens with a bit of spiciness from the saffron. The rose is spicy. It feels like it has been seasoned slightly with the saffron. And then it kind of proceeds into a deep, dark red rose that is dripping with the rose juices. Very sweet, quite jammy rose. And the oud here is a perfect gentleman. This oud is not animalic. It's not an oud that threatens to take over. It's not a dirty oud. It's a very nice, friendly oud that a lot of people who don't like very strong ouds can bear. Yes, and then the patchouli kind of helps to ground everything. I feel like the patchouli comes to help cut down on some of that sweetness from that rose. Yeah, but it still remains a very strong, very jammy, very sweet albeit a very elegant very elegant it captivates you from the beginning to end very satiny very velvety i feel amani Privé did a great job here they did a great job overall on their amani Privé line but this is my absolute favorite alongside mer imperial voila and that is enough of rose derby now i will show you the clone okay the clone is voila i've been loving this kasamat range by rasasi and this one is kasamat morav and this one features notes of bergamot and lemon it's got raspberry it's got white floral notes geranium it's got the rose and then it goes down into patchouli into agar wood into gayak wood you name it a lot more notes Whereas Rose Tarabi has a few notes, I think about four or five notes. This one has a plethora of notes. And at first when I saw the notes, I was a bit concerned. I thought, I wonder how they are going to manage to merge those notes into something that's very cohesive and something akin to Rose Tarabi. And I needed not to worry because they have managed to do that, to blend the notes to the point where they are quite cohesive, where the rose takes center stage, and those are the elements, the white florals that take a backstage. Now, it does have a bold opening, a bold opening with those citruses. It's bold and a bit sharp, but it does tone down, and it tones down, the raspberry picks up pace, and it goes quickly to meet up with the rose, and then they become, they kind of process and become very sweet. To me, it feels like somebody took that rose and dipped it into sugar. And then they added some slivers of 
the lemon and the bergamot and then they chopped up that raspberry and they kind of just allowed it to break down and macerate it feels like it has been cooked into a jam okay like a deep red dark rose jam with raspberry with some lemon some slivers of bergamot very beautiful so you can still pick up some of the notes okay but it's still very well blended and it manages to capture the essence of a rose de rabi. Very thick, very sticky, jammy, sweet rose. Very well blended. Maybe not as velvety and as satiny as rose de rabi, but the blending is there very well done. And the oud comes to the fore as well. Not a strong wood, perhaps slightly stronger than in Rose de Rabi, but it's still not a very strong wood that would offend anybody. Yeah, so hand in hand, that jammy rose with the wood, with the patchouli, with the citrusy notes, really beautiful. Now, the one thing I will say about this one is that it beats a Rose de Rabi. In terms of performance, this one... It performs very well, and then after four hours, it kind of just becomes very faint or a skin scent. If you're very lucky, you might get five or six hours from this one, but I just feel like longevity for this one is a bit of a disappointment for me. As much as I love this fragrance, I kind of feel disappointed with the longevity. The, it performs well, but it doesn't last long, but this one does, okay? This one does. This one goes on and on. This one is kind of doing a lot. It's strong. It, I will say this is a great fragrance. Now, how much of a clone? I will give this one about 97%. Just as captivating as Rose Darabi for a fraction of the price. This one is, for me, Rose Darabi. If you smell this, you will not be able to tell a difference unless you're smelling them from the bottles then you will pick up that this one is slightly more sweeter than this one. All right? Yeah, now I know that this scent profile is not for everyone. It's for people who appreciate both rose and oud with a slight hint of the Middle Eastern. It's not very Arabian, but it will still manage to conjure up images of the Arabian world. And for me, it's the Arabian world of yesteryears or bygone eras. Voila. Yeah, guys, please do not forget to subscribe, leave me a comment, and if you can share our videos, I will really appreciate that very much. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, and I will get there very soon. Until next time, God bless you, and ciao.